Yes, uh, my name is Jorge Larcon. I head engineering for Zoom Data. It, today, I want to give you a quick overview of who we are and what we do at Zoom Data. Then, uh, from there, I'm going to go over the architecture of Zoom Data with an emphasis on how we use Spark to achieve high concurrency and Schema RDD reuse, Schema RDD sharing also. Uh, then I'll cover challenges we face uh, as we uh, uh, use Spark and how we address them. And finally, I'll cover the improvements that you can expect from us in uh, doing uh, in the next coming releases uh, to better support these use cases. Okay. Okay. Uh, so now, a Zoom Data is about empowering non-technical users to interactively visualize data across disparate sources, be that SQL sources, traditional SQL sources like Oracle and Postgres, MySQL, also search sources such as Elasticsearch, uh, Solar, uh, NoSQL sources such as MongoDB, uh, and uh, big data SQL sources such as Impala and uh, SQL, uh, Spark SQL. So I'm going to play a quick video to give you uh, an overview of what Zoom Data is, is all about. So let me see how I play the video here. No. Oh. Okay. So, yeah, so let me go back to, let me see if I can go back to slide. No. Anyways, so Zoom Data it has many connectors and as we, as we bring the, the uh, uh, visualizations, we start uh, uh, you know, sharpening uh, the, the data, and that means bringing the approximation of the results. Uh, sharpening is a combination of a long-running query uh, that is actually building the final result set uh, uh, you know, into a schema RDD. And at the same time, in parallel, it is a, using Zoom Data's in-memory topology to create approximations a, a, you know, a, using a variety of queries to project the result. So challenges we, uh, we face it, uh, you know, is because as all this is occurring and you have many users seeing and interacting with the data, you will end up with many RDDs, which presents challenges on how we share them and how we reuse them uh, in parallel uh, to be able to scale out the application. Okay, so now uh, I'm gonna cover the architecture. This is the full stack uh, Zoom Data architecture. This is, there is not enough time for me to go over this uh, component by component. So what I'm going to do is go over the components that are affected by our use of Spark. So Zoom Data, visualiz uh, Zoom Data, uh, the Zoom Data server receives visualization requests that may include different metrics, different aggregations, different uh, uh, custom calculations configured by users. So what Zoom Data does is that it analyzes this request and creates an execution program. This execution program is passed to the Spark cluster for execution. Executing this program it means that, or, you know, ex it results in creating schema RDDs out of the query results, you know, from executing these queries into the actual sources. 
Also, we implement a fuzzy cash strategy to control how many schema RDDs we keep and to remove schema RDDs that have expired according to user configurations. Now, while all this is happening, we are, Zoom Data uses its in-memory topology to perform small little queries against a data source to be able to project an estimation of the result. It's worth noting that we have a, also another Spark driver that uh, we use to power S3 files, HDFS files, and JDBC sources. Uh, these JDBC sources can be fully cached into Spark if the user configures to do so in cases where the actual SQL source is slow and it doesn't support interactivity of visualizations. So um, in summary, where most BI technologies simply use Spark the Spark SQL connector to pull out query results from exec query executions, uh, Zoom data is objective, technical objective, is to leverage the power of Spark to power its calculations, aggregations, metrics, analytical operations, pivots, pagings, and many other operations we need to support. Okay. So I'm gonna go to the next slide. We're gonna talk about right now of challenges we face when using Spark. And as a caveat, we've been using Spark since its 0 0.7, 0 0.8 uh, version. So some of these challenges are a result of our relatively long use of Spark. So the first challenge is a reading from HDFS. So at Zoom Data, we allow users to you know, visualize HDFS files through Spark. The problem we faced is that the Hadoop libraries that we packaged with Zoom Data had to match the Hadoop libraries that exist in the customer Spark cluster. So, the way we actually uh, uh, address this issue is that we made the Hadoop distribution configurable in Zoom Data by decoupling the Spark driver into a separate process. So when starting this separate uh, Spark driver process, what we do is that we configure the process to point to the Hadoop libraries in its class path eh, according to what the users have configured. Uh, this actually helps us eh, be able to eh, avoid having separate Zoom data builds to support different Hadoop distributions. Another challenge eh, is RDD sharing. And eh, similar to the Spark job server, and uh, now the Hive Thrift, Hive Thrift server, we actually remote the Spark process, the Spark driver process, so that multiple servers can point to it. And to simplify the single server Zoom data deployment, we actually uh, make this process uh, start automatically when, when a, the user has the single server mode. Actually, I missed this. All right, and talking about a, you know, remoting the Spark driver process, when we started, we actually evaluated a, the Spark job server, a, but uh, at the time, we were not sure uh, we wanted to keep as close as possible to the Spark programming model because um, you know, we knew it was going to keep evolving quickly. So 
uh, but you know, still uh, we're looking into it. And and uh, but you, you know, before we jump into into any of these things, we want to make sure we cover several of the items that we need to uh, support. Uh, by the way, the Hive Thrift server now is also an option since we are migrating to Spark SQL. So uh, one of those items is the fine-grained configuration of Spark, uh, Spark context. Uh, another item is progress reporting. Uh, another is custom parses of raw value. Zoom data, Zoom data allows users to configure the type of uh, the, the attribute types, the, if it is a number, if it is an attribute, if it is a currency, or maybe if it is a time out of a string. And uh, we use this metadata to actually parse values from HDFS or, or S3 files. So we need that functionality. Also, we support tab delimited, delimited files. We support XML files. A yarn support, it seems to be across support, uh, this product supported, so that's good. A, we want to keep close again to the Spark programming model as it keeps evolving. And uh, also there are two, the two last items I'm gonna to touch on the next slides, but basically be able to load, have load and read requests on separate scheduler pools, and also to be able to cancel queries. Okay, so another performance item I wanted to touch on is you know, the optimal number of worker threads that you should configure. And in general, the, number of, the optimal number is the number of cores you have in your processor. However, well, let, let's just show you that. Let's illustrate that first. Um, let's go to the next slide. Yes, so it, the optimal number, of course, uh, we said is the number of, uh, the optimal number of worker threads is the number of cores you have in your processor. And here's illustrated that um, in this performance test that includes uh, the simulating 100 users on a 100 gigabytes data set on Redshift, querying it from Redshift, and I have more details on this performance test if you're interested after the presentation. But um, in this specific scenario, it was tested with eight cores and 200 threads. And you can see the max response time was 285 seconds. Then, if you go to the next one, everything else remained equal except that now we have 16 cores running on 200 threads. Same test, maximum response time, 82 seconds. So it performed, it, the, the improvement was better than linear, so that's great. Then we actually set the number of worker threads equal to the number of cores, and you can see a significant improvement. Now it's actually 20, 29 seconds. Okay, so this is important, but, you know, however, having many concurrent users could require more worker threats if they are performing long-running queries, especially against slow data sources. The situation is that queries lock threats, and if you happen to run out of threats, no users will see new data even from existing cached schema RDDs. So that's why you need to play this. You know, that's the flip side of this situation, right? Another item very important is, and it's very related, is be able to cancel queries. So cancel, cancel query functionality is very important. It's a very important part to free up worker threats because as users play and interact with data, they kick off queries, but they quickly may lose context as they change configuration, right? So be able to cancel queries really is important here. And if your source does not support query cancellation, then, you know, that means that you need to up the number of worker threads to a large number. 
OK. So finally, I'm going to walk uh, through a few things that are next for us. Uh, first, of course, a, a move to the Data Frames API and Spark 1.3. We are very, very excited about the new features, and we also want to test uh, this new uh, release with low memory conditions that we know crash, in some instances, the Spark driver in one to one Also, we want to consolidate the um, Spark drivers that we have. We have a couple, and, and we think uh, that we can a, a improve by removing a, any duplication in certain use cases. Uh, also, improve RDD reuse. Because it, you know, Zoom Data reuses RDDs when, use, when the cached RDD is a superset of the a request metrics and aggregations. However, we want to also a, reuse RDDs uh, that may be subsets of the request, but when put together, they actually can answer the question. And finally, we want to keep watching the Hive Thrift server and the Spark job server as they evolve, uh, because they are potential replacements to our uh, remoting of the Spark driver. That's all I have. Thank you. Thanks.